issue of non-marital relationships and the leaders of the Third Reich was, in essence, legitimated. German women were even encouraged to have extramarital affairs so that more racially complete children could be born. So it is not surprising that one of the qualities of a real and ideal woman of the Third Reich was this. Should not be jealous and should be owned by her husband. This is X War History Channel, and today we are gonna tell you about Himmler's lover. Let's continue. Therefore, some members of the top brass of the Third Reich had mistresses on the so-called legal grounds, to whom they gave quite a lot of their time. Moreover, Nazi ideology actually encouraged bigamy, including unofficial bigamy, and some wives of the Third Reich leaders even promoted the thesis of why a second unofficial wife was important. While the first was pregnant, it was the duty of the second to satisfy the man's needs and, after a period of time, to change the official wife when she was already pregnant. Thus, in 1936, Heinrich Himmler, then chief of the police, the Gestapo and the SS storm squads, by patronage took Hedwig Pothast, who at that time was 24 years old, to the post of secretary. Himmler's official wife, Magda, lived in Bavaria, in Tegern Sea with her children, 700 kilometers from Berlin. Moreover, the woman was seven years older than the SS Reichsführer himself, was a Protestant, so Himmler's parents opposed this marriage. Moreover, Magda, who had been a nurse during World War I, was divorced when she met Himmler. It is possible that Himmler, then still unknown to anyone, had a simple business marriage because Magda owned a doctor's clinic. Be that as it may, the young couple did get married in 1928, and two children were born into the marriage. But family happiness did not last long, because the aging friend of life quite naturally attracted the young Himmler less and less. Moreover, with time Magda turned into a kind of fighting woman, as even contemporaries recalled. The cold, nervous and unkind housekeeper in the Walt Trudering began to irritate her impressionable husband to such an extent that he was increasingly absent from home on different pretexts. Also, the very behavior of Magda when her husband ascended to the very top of the Third Reich frankly shocked those around him and got on Himmler's nerves. It may seem strange, but at home Himmler was the most usual subordinate, which was recalled with surprise by Henriette Chirac, who together with her parents visited the future SS Reichsführer quite often. Frau Himmler, a serious woman, harassed her husband. I have never seen a man who was under his wife's heel to such an extent. Himmler radiated civility, but the more gracious he was, the more he was bullied. The assassin chief of the house was a perfect wimp and was constantly inferior to his wife. At dinner he groomed himself, and to his wife he kept offering to try one or the other dish. Needless to say, it is not surprising that the young and beautiful Hedwig, who had an open personality and was openly adoring Himmler, quickly took a liking to the future chief of the SS. The girl was divorced at the time, raising a daughter from her first marriage. At the same time, Pothast had a fairly good education, was intelligent, well-read, athletic, she had the Imperial Sports Badge, and as a true Aryan, was a member of the Germans' Girls' Union. Officially, their romance began in 1938, on Christmas Day, when Himmler and Hedwig confessed their feelings to each other. In one of her letters to her sister, Pothast wrote about it this way. On Christmas Day, 1938, there was a conversation between him and me, during which we confessed that we loved each other, irrevocably. The fruit of the love of the SS chief and Hedwig Pothast were two children. A son was born on February 15, 1942, and a daughter named Nanette Dorothea on June 3, 1944. Himmler was a ruthless executioner and wrote surprisingly tender letters to his beloved. After the birth of his daughter, for example, Himmler began to call his mistress by the same name as his once legitimate wife. You gave me your dear, loving heart, and all of yourself and certainly our two babies. I kiss your sweet, kind hands and your sweet lips. Already during the first pregnancy, Hedwig Pothast left her job as a secretary and completely switched to Himmler's support. Interestingly, unlike Magda, Hedwig was adored in the SS Imperial headquarters and referred to as Bunny. In contrast to Magda, who behaved according to her status as a generalist, Pothast was a kind and welcoming girl. By the way, Magda Himmler was not particularly eager to get to work, because no one smiled at being under the command of the SS chief's narcissistic wife. Moreover, Magda was so fierce in dealing with her subordinates that even Himmler's personal aide, Jochen Piper, mentioned it. 
Himmler concealed his affair with Hedwig so carefully that neither his inner circle nor even his own brother were, in fact, aware of it. The only person who was aware of his chief's amorous adventures was adjutant Jochen Piper, who organized the lovers' meetings and even later married Sigurd Hinrichsen, a colleague of Hedwig. The two women were good friends, and Himmler himself was called nothing less than King Heinrich. Based on Himmler's surviving diaries and his letters to his beloved, we can assume that the SS leader planned to build a new life with the woman by buying a rural estate in Germany. The official wife soon enough realized that her husband was having an affair on the side. Despite the constant gifts her husband sent her, the woman was smart enough to know that her place was already taken. In her diary there is an entry dated Christmas Eve 1938. Magda wrote, What I experienced this year is hard to imagine. And while the legitimate wife could not imagine it, Hedwig established quite good relations with the wives of other leaders of the Third Reich. The woman was inseparable, for example with Lina Heydrich and Gerda Bormann. Himmler tried at every opportunity to visit his beloved and children, but with the passage of the war, which began to develop not in the favor of Germany, meetings became rarer and rarer. According to certain reports, the blonde beauty was not too bored, finding comfort in the arms of other men. By 1945, contact between the lovers was practically limited to letters or telephone conversations. The last meeting between Himmler and Hedwig Pothaas took place in March of 1945. Since then, the lovers never saw each other again. Hedwig learned of Himmler's suicide by radio on May 23, 1945. After the fall of Germany, she tried to escape with her children, but she was detained by the Americans. Under interrogation, Pothast categorically denied any accusations that she was directly involved in the crimes of the SS, assuring that the internal affairs of the imperial headquarters were absolutely none of her business. Pothast was released, although neighbors who knew her assured that the girl had always been sympathetic to the Nazis and Himmler personally. Most likely, Hedwig was saved simply by the inattention of the investigators. Although there is no direct evidence of Pothast's guilt for the Nazi crimes, there is indirect evidence of at least acceptance of the ideology of Nazism, including the most horrific things. For example, after the war, Bormann's son Martin Bormann Jr. said that while visiting Hedwig Pothast, he noticed unusual furniture, a table and a chair. On closer examination, it turned out that both objects were made of human bones. It is therefore reasonable to assume that the numerous gifts and jewelry with which Himmler presented his beloved had a single origin from the concentration camps. It is unlikely that Hedwig Pothast herself was completely unaware of this, especially knowing the inner workings of the SS and knowing who her lover really was. The inconsolable widow married fairly quickly after the war, in the late 50s, and lived a modest life without drawing attention to herself. The eldest son lived with his mother to the end, struggling with an incurable illness, and the daughter received a good education, becoming a doctor. Himmler's own children only learned that they had another brother and sister after the war. Margaret, Himmler's daughter from the first marriage, tried to establish contact, but Pothast strongly forbade it. By the end, we will say that Hedwig Pothast died in Baden-Baden in 1997. Thank you for watching our video. Subscribe to X War History and leave a like.